And today, the states of New York and New Jersey began the gigantic task of cleaning up their crime-ridden waterfront, a task not unlike the classical effort to cleanse the Ogean stables. As it was tough for our old friend Ulysses, it will be tough for the new two-state waterfront commission. Already, rebellion and the threat of violence is spreading out over the docks. But if ever a cleanup was necessary, this one certainly is. The New York waterfront, busiest and richest in the land, has spawned every vicious crime from blackmail to murder. This sprawling, roaring area became nothing less than a jungle, inhabited by criminals, shakedown artists, and muscle men. There, the racketeer is king. His cowed businessmen, his enslaved longshoremen, his bought and corrupted public servants. He came to power by murdering or frightening away honest labor union officials and moving in. He holds his power by threat, murder, savage beatings. His reward, $350 million a year. This money comes out of your pocket, no matter where you live in the United States of America. It's added to the cost of all goods that are channeled through New York Harbor. One source of the racketeer's power, the shake-up system, where men line up for work. A pier bus can starve a longshoreman to death by ignoring him. With such control, he can order the longshoreman to strike at will, uses this to terrorize and bilk waterfront industries. But what you see now is New York's last shape-up. For beginning tonight, this is outlawed, and now longshoremen are being licensed and hired in these new employment information centers operated by the state commissions. Here, longshoremen are assigned to work by licensed hiring agents and then sent directly to their jobs. 25,000 longshoremen have been licensed so far. 250 suspected racketeers have been rejected, and early today, they began to fight back. Despite a government no-strike order, the first picket line sprang up in New York's so-called Pistol Local, controlled by gangster Mickey Bowers. Work stopped at Upper Manhattan Piers, where the luxury liners dock and caught in the tie-up some of the greatest ships of them all, including, of course, the great Ulina United States. Slowly, the work stoppage spread to Brooklyn, New Jersey, at piers where hiring bosses had been refused their licenses. Now, significantly, the trouble came on piers controlled by the old International Longshoremen's Union, which the American Federation of Labor had expelled because it was crime-ridden. Even some longshoremen licensed to work honored their picket lines. By this evening, almost the entire port of New York and parts of New Jersey were tied up, and police have been alerted for a general strike within hours. Brigadier General George P. Hayes, the New York Waterfront Commissioner tonight, issued this statement. There have been work stoppages in several areas. The area controlled by Bowers, the area controlled by Acolytus, and the area controlled by Anastasia, and two piers in Jersey City. I have been told that these work stoppages have been caused by the men refusing to work because certain hiring agents have not been licensed by the Waterfront Commission. We refuse to license these men because of their bad criminal records. I think these work stoppages will end when the honest longshoremen realize they are being taken advantage of by the racketeers and gangsters that the Waterfront Commission is determined to get rid of. There is talk tonight that Taft Hartley may be invoked, that work licenses may be denied those guilty of bringing the stoppages about and taken away from those refusing to work.